What's good? It's Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. And this is not <laughs> another damn another podcast. Damn podcast. <laughs> Presented by our damn selves. Damn selves. 207. <laughs> yeah. So 207. We don't um have sponsors because we presented by our damn selves, but I will shout out to guess who? Three Apples LLC. Yay! Had to stop by and show love to the cousins, Karen, <laughs> Melanie, Michelle. Real cousins, not play cousins. We got too many damn real cousins, so, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Picked up the chocolate chip cookies. Nice. From the looks of it, shout out to my mentor, Mike Love. It doesn't look like there's any animal product in this. I'm gonna read exactly what it says on the label. And I don't, I don't, okay. use it. ordinarily, I don't do this. Fuck R. Kelly, but ordinarily, I wouldn't do this. But <laughs> we're gonna do the live um, unboxing. I know there's videos all over YouTube where you see unboxings of shit. I've never done one. So this is the first for us right here. This is the unboxing we're gonna do right here. <laughs> this is the live Ooh. unboxing. <laughs> And taste test. So we're gonna do it live. I decided right when I was sitting there, I was like, I have the cookies. Let's let's do a live taste test. <laughs> so I'm gonna read the ingredients: flour, mm-hmm. brown sugar, vegetable oil, chocolate mm-hmm. chips, which consist of um unsweetened chocolate and sugar. You have water, baking powder, salt, vanilla extract, vinegar, and cinnamon. So no animal Ooh. products apparently on there, yeah. At least according okay. to the way. So Let's crack this seal and see how this boy <laughs> tastes. I'm, I'm tagging Karen, Melody, and myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had Ariana do hers uh, when I recorded her with a, when she was smashing her cupcake. She was, ah. There you go. Live unboxing. Yes. I was doing an unboxing video. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's yeah. 2021, some strange shit didn't happen. My official unboxing and taste test. The chocolate chip cookies, three apples LLC. Let's see. Good job. I don't know who's what work this is, Karen, Melanie, or Michelle's, but good job, whoever it is. <laughs> Somebody did the cookie recipe, so I'm, I'm I shout all of them out right now, but I don't know whose work this actually was, but good job though. <laughs> <laughs> and Oz is a cookie man. Like if you guys don't know, Oz makes his own uh, actually cookie. vegan cookies. So, yes, yeah. ass cookie recipe myself. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll be talking like this all day now. <laughs> <laughs> Water. <laughs> yeah, but we know for years because like every year when Melanie was doing her Thanksgiving um dinners, um they would always bring stuff that they would make, and mm-hmm. I would. <laughs> I would everything. I'm like, hey, let me <laughs> fill up my plate. You know, I want to fill my plate and eat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, really happy. Looks like uh, they may have another good turnout again because I was following Melanie's uh, social media. Nice today, yeah. Nice day, nice day class, too, yeah. Class, yeah. Class, <laughs> That's I know, but they were still out there. They was like rain or shine. They said, we're still going to be out here. They so. said it wasn't um, popping, but yeah, so they're going to be there whether it's two people or not. They're going to be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So happy for the cousins. Yes, yes. Oh, that yes. Yeah. Okay. So check them out. Like we said, they're on uh, 95th and Longwood Sundays from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a farmer's so Chicago. type of setup with all kinds of vendors and... Yeah, farmer's market, yes. Yeah. So go on, check them out. Come on through to their booth. You see the three apples. Say, hey, we listen to uh, your uh, your cousin's podcast. Not another <laughs> damn podcast. I'm not promise you any discounts for that, but just say like mention not another right. damn podcast. Well, we have, we can't promise <laughs> that, but you know, coordinating people like mention not another damn podcast and get ten percent off. But we not do it. Mention we not ain't doing that. That's we not we don't do that. Here. <laughs> and say what's going to happen when you mentioned. I said show up and mention not another damn podcast. Right. Dot, dot, dot. There before exactly. one o'clock in the afternoon too, because yeah, you won't find them after that. So yeah, right by one o'clock on Sunday. Every Sunday is before one. So there we go. Okay, yeah, before one or H one, yeah. Mm-hmm. So very nice, very nice. All right, that's what the unboxing. I'm proud of you. I yeah, found a new niche, yeah. Oz unboxes this, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's people that are doing that is a whole like video series, people just unboxing shit. Thank unboxing, you. Unboxing iPads and unboxing just random shit like that. Uh, these little kids on YouTube, like I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out that code because these little kids play with toys on YouTube and just I'm like, what, really? I'm like, y'all are watching these kids play with toys. 
But then I watch people uh, buy houses or house hunters. So I'm like, I'm no better, right? <laughs> I, I can't judge my kids. I have watched the boxing and unboxing videos. I've watched some gun unboxing videos. Yeah. I'm a, a <laughs> <second unboxing. There> <laughs> <we go. laughs> I've watched some Glock videos, Smith and Wesson, <laughs> Mossberg. I definitely didn't watch some gun unboxing videos. I'm not laughing. <laughs> so there we go. Teddy. Yeah, let's see how this baby fires. It's like hilarious. We watch it. It's like, <laughs> see my look I'm giving you. <laughs> All right, let's talk. Um, oh my goodness! Just to just to piss Melanie and the cousins off a little bit. We'll go right into sports. <laughs> well, to, to our credit, to our credit, though, it was a good. It was a big sports thing. Like it's been a big. Like it's this is been. A right We're gonna start with it's the big, big one. 2020 Hall of Fame class finally got their flowers because COVID fucked everything up last year. So they finally mm-hmm. had their ceremony. In 2021, Finally. but the 2020 Hall of Fame ceremony was in 2021. That's how it is. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, what a class it was. It was big, heavy on our era. Of course, the headliners, you had um Kobe, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. That's your headliners there. And then I'm going to skip the names that um nobody cares about, at least. <laughs> <Now>. <laughs> it's a lot of names. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, Rudy Tom Janovich, like Rockets coach. I'm familiar with him. Okay, nice, nice. Um, Tamika Catchings, WNBA legend. Yay, ladies. Good names. Quite mm-hmm. the class, yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially as I look at people our era, because like I Both know like, are, like that pretty much defines the era of basketball. Like mm-hmm. um we came like um I say post Jordan like that You're like yeah everything yeah like the Kobe, late nineties that that defines that era yeah. that's the era that bridged the gap between the Jordan and the LeBron era is like mm-hmm. those are like probably the three biggest names like the and Shaq I would say yeah out of those yeah those three and yeah. Shaq bridged that gap that's the name mm-hmm. <laughs> and then AI a little bit in there AI a little bit a little bit a little, little bit AI, AI a little bit yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, because kind of Kevin Garnett was like a big thing for us because like he did come like he was from South Carolina but then he came to Chicago for a Chicago. Year. Farragut. And Farragut, right? Yep. Shout out to yep. home Ronnie Fields. Uh, so he came and he played here. Forgotten, in Chicago. Um, the forgotten guy from that team. He was the point guard for the for that Farragut team. Mm-hmm. He was he was the guard to Kevin's big. Yeah, they were the one two mm-hmm. punch. But Kevin, and he was such a big deal because Kevin Garnett made it a thing where. I'm going straight yeah, after Garnett high school. So Kobe could, and Ken and, and T Mac could walk and shit, basically. Mm-hmm. And LeBron, <laughs> so they could all walk and run. <laughs> all of them could run. You know, like all of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Kevin Darnett did it first. Yeah, from yeah. our era, I'm sure somebody back in the '70s probably did. For somebody corrects me, yeah. For one of you basketball historians, it's like in that '60s corrects me. <laughs> well, you know, you know back, back in my day, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm talking about from the modern era, I'm like in the modern era during our time frame, straight from high school to the pros, Kevin Garnett. Because Kevin Garnett was you and Feast's age group, so it's like okay, like you saw somebody you guys age group doing that, like to go from he high Kevin school. Garnett could have been high. He was in high school when I was in high school. Exactly. And that's why Kobe was a big deal for me because Kobe could have been in high school when I was in high school because mm-hmm. Kobe was like from my era, so it's like he would have been like a senior. Era since Kobe over me, right? He'd have been um an underclassman near the end of when I was in high school. He would have been upperclassman, an upperclassman during my era, exactly. Um, both went to high school together, <laughs> right? Area between us. <laughs> So it was cool, like, seeing people that are your age, people like your era, like that, because, like, we grew up on it. Like, that's who we watch. That's who we idolize. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, like, we view them as, oh, wow, like, these are people, these are people our age. You know, like, these are, you know. When Garnett did it, it was Uncharted Waters. At mm-hmm. least, like, he left the blueprint for, like, Kobe, like I said, T-Mac, Jermaine O'Deal, those ones that came right behind him. Eventually, mm-hmm. LeBron and them came later. Mm-hmm. He, like, he left the blueprint because when Kevin Garnett decided to go pro, People didn't know what was going to happen. So you see, right. After, like, yeah, people really didn't know what to expect with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not only did he get drafted, he was top five. So he got drafted near the top of the draft. Yeah. Because yeah, mm-hmm. so, um, like, you, cause you, had, you hadn't seen that. So you wonder, like, is he going to go in the second round? Like, you didn't know what was going to happen with a high school player. Like, is mm-hmm. anybody, are they going to be scared? They're going to stay away from this dude. It's like, oh, yeah, no college experience. We don't know about him. But And the, and the Minnesota Timberwolves take. <laughs> 
Farragut <laughs> Half Academy. Like, I was rooting for him. I wanted him to go number one that year. I was biased, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> and he, he definitely should have went number one hindsight because that class was, yeah. <laughs> Shout out <laughs> Joe, Joe fucking Smith who went number one and shit. Exactly. <laughs> Even sounds generic. Joe Smith. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Your name is Joe Smith. You're probably not going to have a very easy. Way too ju- I'm shitting on common names and shit. But <laughs> way too. Yeah. <laughs> It Way sounds, too like, sounds amazing. It's like, it's like that. What's the what's the um, what's the phrase with somebody that's just middle of the road? Your average Joe. He your average Joe. The post- <laughs> the average Joe of an NBA player. Like he didn't have a shitty career, but yeah, I can't. He say was that. just there. Yeah. He was just there. <laughs> well, I'm pull up that class and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I did. Uh, I didn't watch it live, but I did get. Uh, I did watch the. Uh, I caught the, the whole highlight. speeches. I watched the whole speeches because you know I said that's a good thing about the internet is that I found the whole speeches on YouTube of the of the three that I wanted to see, our three that we wanted. Sorry, everybody else, but I mean I watched. And I mentioned those a couple three. of honorable mentions that meant something to me, like Rudy T. And then shout mm-hmm. out to the catching. I ain't reading all those names. <laughs> Rest I'm sorry, y'all know y'all probably had great careers, but I'm not reading that list though. So I read the one. Well, Garnett, I did like his uh, speech. Like he brought the funny to it because you know Kevin Garnett. He the character. I mean, He's always been. I mean, the thing that I just think about with Kevin Garnett is that's a goddamn bar fight. Woo, woo! The way he just... they barely, they almost lost that game. So even he had to comment on that how close the game was. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Charles. Charles been in a bar fight. Is why he said well, ask Charles. Like, what? And I like his um, I, and I like his fun his TNT show um Area 21 or whatever. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. that shit is hilarious. It's like, they did mm-hmm. be cussing live on the air, zero he fucks. Was, yeah, he, he would cuss, yeah. Zero fucks given and shit. Like, he would cuss, <laughs> yeah. But that's that's Garnett. You can't I mean, like he was like the, a master at like the trash talk and he was the he, one like when you look look at look at some of his classic games. Um you listen and say you hear some cuss words on the court. <laughs> Get that <laughs> shit out of here. Like you hear that all the time. It's like, like Kevin Garnett would talk shit. Like, look at some of those old Timberwolves mm-hmm. slash Celtics games. Like, you hear a lot of shit talking. Most of the time it's him and shit when you hear that. Get that, sh- that fucking shit out of here. Like, and I like that he said that the only thing that he regrets is that he said, I didn't bring you a championship, Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. I didn't bring you guys a championship. Yeah, that's he mentioned he said that he never brought many one. And he should have, he like, he wished he would have went to Boston earlier. That's the two things. Mm-hmm. But he said that I'm, he said, but I'm going to be here helping you guys build in, uh, in Minnesota. He said, I'm going to be here. What? Yeah, I'm about to get to that big news after we finish this up. Yeah. But uh, okay. I'll, I'll circle back to that. Mm-hmm. You know, the Timberwolves have been sold. I mentioned, I'll tell you who bought them, but um, we're going to circle back to that. Mm-hmm. Finish this up. Well, since we're in this 95 draft class, I want to finish. Oh, Lord. Joe Smith, your average Joe at the top. <laughs> Joe Smith. We're just going to do, like, some of the top picks, yeah. Antonio McDyess, number two, all-star, not bad, yeah. Yeah. Backhouse was three. Jerry Stackhouse, all right. Yeah, he had a decent career. Yeah. Back had a decent career. Mm-hmm. Um, Sheed was four, yeah. Mr. Ball don't Ball lie. Ball don't lie. <laughs> Great pick there. <laughs> Rashid was four, and um, KG was five. That's your top five right there. Nice. Okay. So that, yeah, KG definitely should have been one. I would probably put Sheed at two. I might a stack and McDice, they could either flip either. Oh, three. don't lie. <laughs> Some of the other honorable mentions we had Damon Stoudemire, Mighty Mouse went seven. Okay. Kurt Thomas went 10. You remember him? You probably Big remember him near, the, near the end. <laughs> That's what they called him Big Sexy. <laughs> Bones, Brent Barry went 15. I'm just reading some of these names now. Bones. All right, town Mike Finley, 21. Shout out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Finley. All right. Yeah, now we um that's when we get to the crappy part of the draft class 21. Like <laughs> the crappy part. The cats have never heard of, especially these second rounders. Yeah, we're not going there. We're not reading none of their names. No. 95 class was mediocre, but the 96 class, on the other hand. Woo-hoo. Mm. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Mm. Woo-hoo. Yeah, we can we could go or I say yes. We go, we segue into it. That's how we, we do it. We're not doing it. Yeah. We we going to order you. Kobe, let's the KG to KB. Let's do it, baby. Kobe, KB, baby. <laughs> Kobe Bryant inducted, of course, by the great Michael Jordan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got to read the list of inductors. I I totally skipped that. 
I lost my space mm-hmm. on my iPad now, but yeah, I had the whole list of inductors. So you you could you we 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 just go right into Kobe right now. We come back to that. And uh, of course, uh, his lovely widow Vanessa gave his speech, and she accepted. Wow, she accepted. I was like, I should not have watched that first thing in the morning because I I literally was crying watching the speech because it was just such like. Caught the highlights, so I've been um get the. I, I watched the whole speech. I was crying, like everything she was saying. I was just I had, crying. I had to go get. I had to go get my three apples. Can't go get your three apples here. Yeah. I didn't get to watch all <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And just the love that she's getting from everybody. Like first thing she says, she says, "I'm okay." She says, "She's trying to reach." I'm okay. She's like, "I'm okay." Everybody, yeah, I, like, yeah, um, I saw the pics of them while I'm with their um their twenty their Hall of Fame jerseys, and I saw Talia had Kobe's. Which mm-hmm. was a nice touch, yeah. Is done. She had, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that speech, though, that Vanessa gave, when she talked about the thing that got me about, she said when she asked Kobe, "Why do you play through so many injuries?" and his answer was, "What about the people, the fans who saved up their money to see me just play one time, Excellent. doing it for them?" And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> late to that here in Chicago, um." The Lakers only in town once a year. So if you saved all your money to come see Kobe and he don't uh-huh. play, yeah, yeah, that's uh-huh. the game he happens to miss. <laughs> you might not be too happy. <laughs> and he said that's why he goes so that he, like he said that he went so hard for the fans. Like his fans were everything to him. Like he did it for his fans because he said, and this made me go, because uh, Vanessa said that um, she was like, Kobe remember when he was a kid, sitting in the nosebleeds with his father watching his favorite player play and then she just looks over at Michael Jordan and then she looks back. But the way she looked at Michael and then she looked back, she's like, he, they would be sitting in the nosebleeds to watch his favorite player play. So he knows about sitting up in some nosebleeds trying to see your probably favorite player the, play um, being so excited. At, at the Spectrum in Philadelphia probably like back in the day when the Spectrum was still up. I was trying to think of what stadium. It probably would have been the Spectrum in Philly. Back and when she did that look, when she cut that look to Michael and then Michael just like he had like a little smile. Michael just, you know, he just you could tell he was just so touched by that. He was just so touched. But it was a beautiful speech and it just showed that the mama mentality ran so deep in that family, just the grit, the determination, the strength in that family. Just all of them just have that. They just got that. All of them got that mom, but all of them got that mentality where it's like, we're strong. We go out here. We we do it. We we don't make excuses. We go out and we deliver. Mamba mentality. I was like, all right, man. I don't think it was a dry eye in the house. Like, I, I mean, if I was there in person, I know, like I said, I was crying watching it on my phone, but I don't think it was a dry eye in the house for the Kobe at all. What but Vanessa class. kept it together. She was very strong. She kept what, it together. What a class, 96. Because that's the big, the great debate. The greatest NBA class. 84, 84 96, 96 03. Like it's one of those, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think 96 might get it as far as like <laughs> four second, 03 third. That's all I would say out of those three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So looking at this class, let's read the class right now. AI at the top of the list, of course, Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. Camby was two. He had a good career. Like, Camby. yeah. Fuck yeah. Sharif Abdul Rahim went three. Mm-hmm. So, Steph Marbury four, who um not only had a good NBA career, became became China. He's became, like the Michael Jordan of China. Became a god <laughs> in China and shit. Okay, yeah. shoes, you know. Starberry, yeah. like he reinvented, yeah. he reinvented the shoe game. He said, I'm gonna make these shoes affordable so like parents can afford to buy them for their kid. Exactly. Yeah, 15 bucks, I think, is what his Starberry right. store for. Because so, them uh them the Jordans, whole game thing. <laughs> them hundred and seventy dollars add up. <laughs> Um, Ray Allen went number five. So good Jesus shuttles work. Mm-hmm. Right, town number six. Shout out Twan, baby. <laughs> Twan is Twan. Mal Carmo alum. Shout out for Marcus. Mal Carmo alum. <laughs> uh, this is one you might remember the the, uh, the late Lorenzen Wright. Remember that story? Was yeah, like, I remember that. Seven. So sad. Number eight was Kerry Kittles with the um the, the Nets. I remember him. I remember Kerry Kittles. I remember him. I remember him. The um controversy with Kittles is um the Nets were thinking about taking Kobe there. It's like um 
But his agent leaked it out, said Kobe wouldn't play for the Nets. So they that's why they don't get because like they were looking <laughs> at him and they said, um, if he if you draft him, he's gone, he's gonna play overseas or some shit. That's the rumor that's out there, at least. I don't know how true that was, but yeah, they said yeah, if you draft him, he's going to play overseas or something. <laughs> like, instead of Kobe. <laughs> and then you had a car, yeah, you had some crappy players, nine, ten, and eleven and twelve. Like we skip all of those. Yeah. I can't even pronounce his name. Is Ukrainian cat Vitaly Potapenko? Vitaly Potapenko. I hope I said it right. That's a that's a trivia question right there. Who's the guy that got drafted right before Kobe Bryant? This guy, Vitaly Potapenko. <laughs> I think I said it right. Yeah, he was twelve. Kobe went thirteen. Kobe fell all the way to thirteen. Think about that. That's Damn. how deep the draft was, and it's still good players under Kobe. He wasn't even the last good player taken. Right behind Kobe, you had Paige Stoyvac, Stoyakovich at 14. Yeah. Right behind Steve, Paige Stoyakovic, you had Steve Nash at 15. Steve, yeah, was it Steve Nash in that class? I was going to say, wasn't Steve Nash in that class? 15. Yeah. <laughs> 15. Steve Nash at 15? Man, um, Jermaine O'Neal went 17. And shit. Like, he was still good players taking, like, deep in his – so if you had, like, a um, mid to late first rounder, you could have got somebody. You could have got Steve Nash, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cavaliers took Big Z with 20. Big Z was an all-star. Injuries kind of killed his career. Yeah. But he, was, he was okay. Mm-hmm. And undrafted, you had Big Ben Wallace. So even in the undrafted players, Ben Wallace was a yeah, former bull, former pissed in there. So even then. So, fro. Yeah, the fro. <laughs> that was his name. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. the undrafted players. So then we go from 96 to 97. Which another inductee from this class, Tim Duncan, Timmy. Mr. Big Fundamental. Greatest power forward of all time. All time. He is. Mm -hmm. He's definitely is. Yeah. I say then like Malone and Chuck. He didn't get his because he played for San Antonio and um, he was considered boring. So, yeah, that's why he doesn't get the Mm -hmm. props. But Mm -hmm. he had a hell of a career, though. Big fundamental. He's fundamental as hell. And for people who talk about Tim Duncan having a boring personality, his Paul is he did really well in his speech. Like he was funny in it. I said, so for people saying he didn't have a personality out there, I guess he proved you guys wrong. He was just Tim, on the court. <laughs> Tim was funny on his speech. Mm-hmm. Like I liked uh, like I liked um the respect that he paid for his people. Like uh he gave shout out to of course Manu and um yeah, Tony, because they were there. His, his left and right hand man, yeah. Manu and of course, Darren Robinson was there to present him. David Robinson was there, mm-hmm. so like he was. Like, I started I with Robinson. That's the guy that, then, that molded him. Yeah, without, right, I started without with him. Crawled so Tim Duncan could walk. He's, mm-hmm. He molded him. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the last person he thanked was Popovich, and that was just wow. so fitting. The last person, because because now you know, he's man, like he don't want me to thank him. <laughs> and it and it continues, like I said, to give him back because um Popovich, I think, is grooming Tim Duncan to be the next coach. Because Duncan right now is part of it's, he's part of the coaching staff with San Antonio. A lot of people don't know this. So, like, know Duncan, so like then Popovich, he's getting up there in age, so he's probably mm-hmm. grooming Tim to take over eventually. That's how I see it at least. So Tim is probably gonna be head coach of the Spurs. I think that would be just such a that would just be a great moment of like just passing the baton. That would be a wonderful baton pass because. What did he do? 17 years in San Antonio? Yeah. I think something like that. Yeah. He did a lot of years in San Antonio and just a wonderful career. Five time champion. Um, uh, did he win? Did he win a, a what? 15 time all star? Like, yeah, yeah. All star. Yeah. He had a hell of a career. Man. Mm-hmm. Finals MVP. Finals yeah. MVP. He, uh, like, and the thing that I didn't know that I was today years old. When he would say, I didn't start playing basketball until I was 14. What? Yeah, <laughs> what? Most cats are playing like from, yeah, the, the early like five. They play ball. like at five. But and he started at 14. Really so good. for him to be the best power for ever, and he didn't start till 14, what does imagine, that say? Imagine if he had started earlier. <laughs> right. <laughs> he'd, like, he'd be in GOAT status then. Like, he'd be like, <laughs> what he started earlier. <laughs> And he was like, and he was from, because I know he's from the Virgin Islands. He's like, yeah, you know, he was like, but my, um, when my island got hit by a category five hurricane and, you know, he was just talking about that and just like how they took a chance on me. The, uh, the tall lanky kid. Mm-hmm. 
Wake who had no basketball knowledge. Forrest gave him a shot in the Spurs, eventually drafted him. He said, I want to be a swimmer. That's what he wanted to be. He wanted to be a swimmer. Mm-hmm. Like, he never even thought about playing basketball. He wanted to be a swimmer. So yeah, When he turned out to be <laughs> seven feet tall, he said, hey, maybe you should think about basketball. Maybe you should play the tall, lanky kid. <laughs> <laughs> Never think about playing basketball. I know about that because they did that for me with football when I went to my high school because I was like this size. Um, <laughs> right when you were 12. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was visiting high schools, they said, hey, you, you, you think about playing football? I got that everywhere I went. The coaches the play coach ball me out the door on the way out. After I remember that. I remember that. Even they like, going back to the car, this dude ran out. Hey, ran yeah, out. hey, hey, hey you play hey. ball? Hey, hey. <laughs> I remember he did chase because I was with you guys. He chased you. Come here, you gotta play football. (laughs) (laughs) He chased you out the (laughs) real Um, this '97 class was um kind of (laughs) iffy, but they got the one right at Duncan at the top. '97 class kind of reminds me of this past class that just happened this past year. It's like a few good guys at the top, and then it's it's a lot of shaky picks on this draft because like. Duncan, we won. Keith Van Horn went to. He's like the original Laurie Markin, and I'll say. <laughs> yes, I say he. Yeah. Um, Chauncey Billups was three. That's a good thing. Okay, champion. He's a champion. Whole yeah. lot of nothing from four through eight. <laughs> Not even reading those names. T Mac went nine. So once again, like okay. T Mac yeah. probably would be two in a redraft, like ahead of Billups. I'll say. Mm-hmm. Redraft his class. Um, after that. I don't even see any names worth reading. <laughs> after uh, after T Mac, I'm looking. Um, let's see who we had. A bunch of nothing. <laughs> okay, Captain Jack in the second round. Okay, Steven Jackson. That's a good pick. Okay, okay, yeah. Second overall. I had, to, I had to see how far I had to dig to find another good player. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm midway through the second round. <laughs> I had to go all the way down to find his. Uh, it, it means like that sometime with the whole. Not all drafts are created. Even like, and, um, <laughs> no, um, no undrafted players were special either. We just skipped them. A lot of times mm-hmm. the undrafted pool, like shout out Rockford's Fred Van Vliet was undrafted. So you can find good players in the undrafted. Like Ben Wallace, we just talked about probably the greatest uh-huh. undrafted player of all time. I was and speaking of Ben Wallace, like we said, we ain't new at this. Speaking of Ben Wallace, the news about him is what? He's going in 2021. Yeah. And he's making Hall of Fame episode. We're gonna do a couple, we're gonna we're gonna talk all about Hall of Fame, not just yeah. sports. Yeah, so this might and be did, Hall of Fame edition. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he did uh no, this is history, I, right? Because I, I, he's the first Apple, player. Like, Hall of Famers in the making, too. So I'm just saying. So uh, it's Hall of Fame edition. Yeah. And this is history, right? Because he's the, say, first, he's the first. He's the first undrafted player ever to go into the Hall. Play into the Hall of Fame. I'll say as far as undrafted players, he's definitely the goat. Without without question, he's the goat. As far as like undrafted players, that has to make him like. I wonder, like, if he's just like. Technically, you know, I, want, I can't history. wait to hear his speech. Cause another gonna be like, like I shouldn't even be here. Like, but um, how did I, how how did I even end up here? Cause like he he didn't even get drafted. He probably thought his basketball career was over. So mm-hmm. oh well, I gotta find me a job and shit. And then I think um, even though I'm six ten, <laughs> Washington gave him a shot. They said, okay, um, we'll um, we'll give you a look. Like, come on, big man, give you a come look. here. And the irony, irony of that is like how he ended up on the Pistons is like was totally random. <laughs> Cause um, the trade was. It had to be uh, after he left Washington, he went to Orlando. And you remember okay. Grant Hill and shit. Um, he left Detroit to go to Orlando. This went Orlando, right. Grant Hill and T Mac in that same year. They tried to get Duncan, but they didn't. They botched that because um, some some about him Duncan. They wouldn't let Duncan use the private jet or some shit like that. Which is like obviously Orlando's a shit a shit storm of a fucking organization for that one. You could have had Tim Duncan. He could have been giving that speech shouting out to Orlando Magic now, but y'all fucked that up and shit. So going back to so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, they, 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 Grand Hill was like, but um, it wasn't just a straight up um signing; it was a sign and trade, which a lot mm-hmm. of times I'm getting real nerdy for my fucking non sports fans, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah, uh, that's what his uh basketball knowledge. <laughs> sign and trade, and when you sign and trade, you send something back to the other team. That's why they do sign right. and trades because like it helps it benefits but it benefits the player because he can get more money because sign mm-hmm. and trade you can get a fifth year in the deal. 
Well, like if you sign a free agent, you can only get four years. You can get that right. Extra year. So like mm-hmm. we get you an extra year, but we sign you first and trade you. That's what a sign and trade. Mm-hmm. You sign your own free agents to five years, and you sign with another team is only four. So that's why they did the sign and trade to like so Grant Hill get an extra year, and they we get something back. We like we don't just lose them for nothing. So Detroit gets something back for them. One of the pieces they sent back was Ben Wallace. It was a throwaway and a sign and trade. That's all he ended up in the Pistons. <laughs> It's crazy. Hey, but but the thing they always say, Players, this, is what, throw away this is what they say when you play sports. You can't get so personal. It's business. You can't get that personal. Like, hey, you got me here. I'm going to make do with what I got. Hey, I'm here now. So Wallace, he's like his journey to the NBA is unlike none. Like I said, he wa- wasn't even drafted. Yeah. Um, signed like probably at the end of the bench on a couple of teams and was just a piece thrown in to the sign and trade for Grant Hill. And Grant Hill's Orlando career turned out to be complete trash. He was injured the whole time. That's when he started declining. He wasn't yeah. the guy. He wasn't the Pistons Grant Hill they were getting. It's like uh-huh. he was already washed up by the end, like by the time he went to Orlando. Man, if injuries would not have gotten Grant Hill, he would have been one of the been, best. That is, he yeah. would have been one of the best, yeah, if injuries didn't get him one of the best, yeah. I think in his first three seasons in Orlando, he pl- I think he played like single digit games combined, yeah. something like that. Like just injuries, just like what was his ankle? A lot of ankle stuff, right? With him, yeah. right? I think yeah, he hurt his ankle in Detroit. He was already injured when they brought him in. That's the day that we signed an injured player. He- when he showed them ankles on the uh, on NBA TV, and then yeah. he's showing like the bone of like, his ankle, like the way his ankle just looks. I'm like, that's his ankle. Like he had man. multiple surgeries on that ankle. Yeah, it's like damn, look at his ankles, dude. <laughs> But um, that's how Ben Wallace ended up in Detroit. Is like, um, I'm so happy that he got this because that, like you said, like you, I'm not even supposed to be here, but mm. against all odds, I'm here, and now I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm a, um, a multiple time Defensive Player of the Year, NBA champion. He didn't have. A, I'm a, a champion. And an NBA champion against mm-hmm. one, like when one of the biggest and probably the biggest upset in NBA history. Against, yeah, you beat Shaq, Kobe, Carl Malone, and Gary. Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> you beat that team and shit. Phil Jackson coaching. You beat Phil Jackson's Lakers. You beat Phil Jackson's Lakers. <laughs> with, yeah, with Malone and Peyton, too. Nice. Shaq, Kobe, and Malone. And Damn. Peyton. Like, that's what Ben Wallace beat that team and shit. So, biggest. Uh, I'm not even a Piston fan, but that was impressive. I had to give him props for that. Shout out my guy, Irk. He's like, he's like the, we're the biggest Piston fan I know personally. <laughs> so, yeah, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was impressive. Even I was like, okay, they beat the shit. They and beat the, they didn't dominate it. It wasn't even like close. They dominated the Lakers in that series and shit. Beat the shit out of them boys. <laughs> but Wallace is um the first, uh, yes, the first undrafted player in um NBA in um mm-hmm. a Hall of Fame history. Yeah, to make it. Yeah. And what are some of these other names in here? We got um, um, hold, on. Mr. Pop- hold on. I'm pulling up my list. Um, you know I fucked up and shit. Well, you go ahead. Yeah, I'll let oh, you. Oh, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't talk a lot. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Paul Pierce, I see, is on the list as well. The truth. Mm-hmm. Mr. Paul Pierce, Celtic uh, legend, won a championship there. So, yeah, that's another one right there. And I see Chris Bosch is on the list as well. Yeah, see, I had the whole list. I want to find it. I want to read with you. So, like, yeah, um, Mm -hmm. talk about Bosch a little bit while I find my list. I'm not giving up. Fuck that. (laughs) (laughs) Another guy whose career was tragically cut short, like Bosch. Um, he could have his um, I think he had the the illegal, the um, irregular heart. But there's something with his heart. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, he had to retire before his time. Yeah. Yeah, I see the list. Um, I found the list. I'm pulling it up right now. Hold on. I got it. Okay. Here's Chris Boss. Here we go. Thank you. God damn it. <laughs> it. You know, you all you close out shit and you didn't more bark market and shit, so it fucks you up. Right. Okay, we had yeah, Chris Bosch. Who, who do we say already? Uh, ben Wallace, Paul Pierce, Chris Bosch. Here's one that um you'll enjoy. Former Chicago Bull Tony Kukoc, the waiter, the waiter. Let's go, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tony, that one. Love that he got this. I was so happy seeing that because 
Tony doesn't get his respect, I feel like. I mean, outside of, we're Bulls fans. So I'm, like, think about it. Yeah, he was part of the, um, he was on the Bulls with Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, like all of them were here. It was, um, it's easy to get lost in that shuffle. <laughs> so that's what it is. But Tony was, he was, um, I would say, if not, he's top five of your greatest Euro. I think Dirk and Whiskey is the greatest Euro player. Obviously, Dirk, yeah. Kobe, the, the Tony's up there, top five, I would say. Mm-hmm. He's up there, greatest Euro mm-hmm. players of all time. I think Luca is going to be up there one day yeah. in his career. Right now, mm-hmm. I would say he's in the top five greatest Euro. Because mm-hmm. what this, what Dirk Tony, like, did, a six man, like, he, like, he made some of those big shots. He made some of them. He made some big to, shots down the stretch. Had to give up being a star for that. Because think about when he was over in Europe and Croatia, like he was like Jordan. He was the guy on the team. He had to come here and take a bench role because of the team he was on. So he had to give up a lot to like to be like in the- basically he had to go from being uh, like if we're doing Avengers, he had to go from being Iron Man to uh, Falcon. Falcon. Yeah, like, right. He's like, okay, I'm Falcon now. Yeah, <laughs> not like, Iron Man anymore. I'm Falcon. <laughs> He had to like take that back seat. I'm reading Woj. That's where I got it from. That's why I'm not, I ain't I'm Captain not, America. I'm I'm find my news. I'm looking at Woj. <laughs> uh, finally, after all, these, we finally talked this up. We we're just talking about this last night. Or was yes. our, Chris Weber? I was like, yes, what? we were just talking about this. It was so. Funny. I was like, Chris Weber should have been in the Hall like of Fame. Is finally. it because of the the money he took? Like the scandal, the money. scandal which once again, like you wouldn't have to take bribes if you pay the athletes and stop calling them students and shit. Yeah. It wouldn't be illegal and shit if you like that. Uh, Wait my hand. Uh, it. It's only illegal because this NCAA is full of shit. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's the only reason that he, what he did was illegal. If he was, if he was um, properly compensated for what he brought to the University of Michigan, he wouldn't have to take money under the fucking table. Wolverines. <laughs> God damn it. You got me pumped up, man. Because my group on Facebook is going nuts about that. Because I'm in the uh, the Black Alumni Network for Big Chance Schools on Facebook, mm. and like, of course, they're like, "Congratulations to Chris Weber!" Ah! Every and year, like every, when you look at the inductees, everybody looks like Chris, Chris Weber. Like you, everybody looks because he didn't have a Hall of Fame career. Like, he didn't win a championship, but uh, he didn't have a hell of a career. Like, yeah, a great career. He did. He had mm-hmm. a, a hell of a career and shit. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm glad to see he's finally going in. <laughs> finally. It was that scandal, like said, which was which is bullshit. That's that's what kept him out all this time. Mm-hmm. They finally said, "Oh fuck it, let him in." Yeah, let him in. It's couple, been long enough. It's of, been long enough. A couple of coaches I read. Um, Rick Adelman, I know him from his Portland days. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The Bulls and the putting the Trailblazers, the '92, the the that series. Yeah, Rick <laughs> yeah. Adelman, he was the coach on the other bench for that series. That's what. That's why I know Adelman from like when he was his days with Portland. Yeah. The shrug, mm-hmm. yeah. So he had mm-hmm. uh, yeah, multiple finals appearances. I don't think his teams any won any championships. And here's one um well overdue. I say Bill Russell going. Bill there. Russell, yeah, that's well overdue. Yeah, yeah. He's, been in, he's because people looked at that. Russell's not in. Yeah, he's in as a player. As a player, not as a coach. And as a coach, yeah, because he's mm-hmm. um for, first ever black head coach. That's he should be in just on that alone and shit. The yeah, first first, especially during the era that he did this yeah. in. He did this he in what the, 60s? In the 60s and said, yes. So he was coaching during that during hey, early civil rights. From, you know, he went straight from playing to like a coach. He went straight to the bench. So yeah. this was like during early civil rights. He was coaching the first black coach, head coach. So that based on that alone, I say, yeah, that should get him in the hall. Alone. The first ever black head coach. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's his big story. ups to him. Big ups to Bill Russell. Well overdue. Because he was ducked, he was ducked in '75 as a player. So, so he been in all our. He been like, in as a player, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's some it's some bullshit. If Russell ain't in, I'm like, as a player, of course, like 11 championships. Dude got inducted in '75. <laughs> <as a player. laughs> but, but, but as a coach, like he had people just, just read the first part of the headline. They don't read the oh, rest yeah, of the, it. Ray, yeah, Russell. Yeah, he's just as been, a coach. Yeah, no, nah, he. To know you can be inducted twice in the Hall of Fame if you're gonna mm-hmm. talk in a minute. For the rock and for rock and roll hall of fame, yeah. Yes, twice, yeah. And that's what it is. Because if you did different shit, if you mm-hmm. were a great player and a great coach, they're gonna put you in twice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or well, if you were a great singer and then you're a great songwriter, you can get in twice. Mm-hmm. 
where um shout out my wrestling fans, WWE, like Ric Flair, a two-time Hall of Famer. He's in as the nature boy Ric Flair, and he was part of the four horsemen, the group he was with. So <laughs> right. Bret Hart is like, yeah, he's in as Bret Hart and it's with the Hart Foundation. He's in twice. Yeah. Booker T was um, I'm doing I'm nerdy now. Yeah. Ha, One ha, of my ha. favorites, I like the Hart Foundation. Harlem Heat, yeah. Booker yeah, T. Heart Foundation, them with my dudes. I like the Heart and Foundation. Brett's in twice, yeah, with the bunch with um by himself and once with the Heart Foundation. So if you die, you mm-hmm. get in twice by that, yeah, I'm gonna get this rock and roll hall of fame real quick. Because so, it was a what a hell of a class and shit. Yeah. So we're gonna be looking at this 2021 next year. We're gonna be, you know. Oh no, that's right. No, they're gonna be on trying on September 11th, it says. So yeah, coming up. We'll be watching that. I'll be watching. Closely with that. Um, of course, my stupid iPad wants to act like a little bitch while I'm trying to pull it up. <laughs> Watch dope, it. dope, dope. You don't want me to be great today and shit. That's all. <laughs> it is just amazing just seeing like, like, like you always just say about us. Like, we just know that we're getting older when we're seeing like our greats go into like Hall of Fame because when we were younger, it's like Hall of Fame where people like. Um, Elgin Baylor and people like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it was like people like, like that, you know. <laughs> that shows you we've been we've been watching a long time. Like when right. Kobe and Kobe and them got drafted in the mid nineties, like you couldn't you couldn't even imagine them being Hall of Famers. No, they were, not at all. Not, yeah, because like they were like the they youngest guys. Drafted. They were like some of the youngest guys like, who ever got like drafted. So young and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, you couldn't even imagine them being Hall of Famers. <laughs> That's what's great. But now they all Hall of Famers. That's and cool. they're all watching it. Like it's like, damn, like, man. It's like looking, let's like looking now, like um trying to imagine like LaMelo Ball being a fucking Hall of Famer now. <laughs> it's hard to like wrap your brain around that shit. It's like they're so young, you can't even think about that. It's so way so divided. Right. Yeah. But like, so that's what Kobe and them going in now was like hey, with us watching back then. But um, rock and roll Hall of Fame class of twenty twenty one. Let's do this. Yes, I'm. I'm. You know what the fuck I'm starting. Like fuck that. We 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 gonna start here and shit, man. We starting here and shit, man. Hove. Allow me to reintroduce Hove. myself. My name is. People already people hashtag Hove of Fame. Already saw that H O V. Hove of Fame. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. It's the Jay Z. Jay Z needs to headline. He's probably not. They probably gonna let somebody else. What more can you say Jay-Z. about Mister <laughs> Sean Carter? Mm-hmm. Sean Jay Z Carter from Marcy Projects. Holla at your boy. D boy came from the projects. Mm-hmm. Billionaire now. How many Grammys has he won? Oh, I just say a title and I just leave it at that. Yeah. Title. Got his own streaming service. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> come on. And for you high, married to Beyonce. <laughs> like, come on now. Come on. Old Beyonce, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got married to Beyonce. Hey, come on now. Hey. <laughs> don't see but similar to the well as not one could do it better let's go man <laughs> Woo. i got to see jay-z live thanks to the eyes i got to go to the uh, hanger, hanger tour, tour. <laughs> Woo, what an experience. i was there i was there that's, thank you that's when, I, that's when i was still dope and shit <laughs> so I, yeah that was um because the hanger tour for those that don't remember like um for my fans that might be a little bit younger or for my older fans that just don't follow hip-hop like that um well, Jay Z retired around 2004, or 2005. He retired from hip hop. Yeah, it was like mm-hmm. right after the Black album. The Black album. Right was after the Black album. album. Yeah, it was supposed to be his curtain call, a Black album. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, he came back and is still making music to this day. But that was supposed to be it. But him coming back, his first tour back after um the retirement was the Hanger tour. The Hanger tour. I was about oh seven oh eight. I don't remember somewhere around. And he did what? Seven cities seven. in 24 hours. He was like, yeah, on the um flying on the jet, yeah, going straight from the airport to the venue back to the airport. Pop ins, pop ins. Yeah, yeah, so he started a helicopter taking him from the um vent from the airport to the venue, back to the airport, and then get on the jet, fly to the next city. He did yeah. that it was all in one day. Mm-hmm. All the cities. Like, so of yeah. course, he started on the East Coast, of course, because the East Coast is the the time is like obviously the the latest. And then he worked his way yeah, west. Way west. Yeah. Yeah. When he stopped here in Chicago, it was at the Riviera. That was the, um, mm-hmm. that, which I've seen Jay-Z a couple of times there because I saw him for the Blueprint tour at that same day. I've seen Jay-Z about five times this FY, which is why this is so exciting to me. I've seen him about five times. I've seen him once. So, I mean, I, I got to see Jay-Z once because of you. 
Thank you, Oz. Thank you, Oz. <laughs> but um, yeah, when Jay um, yeah, he land, yeah, he came and he had a hangar tour, and the shows were only like an hour long because he had to like get, mm-hmm. it, get it out. So like it wasn't like no long shows. So it was some, right. and they, they t- you couldn't buy tickets. You had to. It was like it was like Willy Wonka. You had to get that golden. You t- had to be chosen. <laughs> what i was one of the chosen i was one of the chosen few like see i might not be a chosen few dj but i was one of the chosen few that day <laughs> i remember you said to me you want to go to see jay-z i said hell yeah <laughs> you see, go i had to take it in my hand i said let me call the kid and see if she wants to go <laughs> you want to go i made sure at work i was like can someone cover for me like i'll come in a little earlier because i ain't missing jay-z <laughs> yeah people hate me like yeah like trying to feel i'm I'm, a, I'm trying to get me tickets. Like you can't buy them. You might you can't find them. Why you might be scalping them like for ten thousand dollars online? But yeah, you can't buy these tickets. So yeah. <laughs> Somebody else stuff up might be scalping a pair, but you can't. Somebody buy was them. scalping them for like six hundred dollars a ticket, something like that. That's, yeah, and this like, was really? like just like fifteen yeah. years ago. So that was like big, really big money then. Like, like six hundred dollars, kind of high back then. That was like well, back then, high, like back sixteen six hundred dollars. 15 years ago a lot of money but um let's read this um let's read the rest of the names that mean something to us yeah <laughs> we're gonna build up yeah so congrats <laughs> jay-z once again also we had um ll cool j i need an around the way girl probably um one of my first favorite rappers ever back with uh, the um bigger and deafer album was my Box. album yeah yeah, radio. <laughs> my radio, believe me, I like it loud. I'm the man with the box that can rock the crowd. Come on, man. <laughs> and then rock the bells. You have LL Cool J is hard as hell. Bad on anybody, they don't care if you tell. I excel, they are fail. Come on, man. I'm getting pumped up. No, no mine is when I'm alone in my room. Sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the yeah, back of my LL, mind, I hear my conscious call. <laughs> LL's greatest album, bigger and deafer. My I love African rap quite like I can. Like I can. I take a muscle muscle man, man, man put his face in the sand. Ooh, I'm bad, man. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to when, that shit after we finish this. When part. LL did the love song, though, that just drew me in. I, I, I was sold. Another sold. side that was from that same album. I was sold. I was sold. And then he was just so cute to me because he had the dimples, he had the kango. I just thought LL was just the cutest thing. Good <laughs> about candy. Come on, man. <laughs> also, you had um. Uh, the story is over when Rhyme ain't done. What he was talking about was going to the cartoons and shit. That was like a nice he man said he beat me up because he thought that <laughs> then I hung out with Spider Man. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah, I mean, that whole album was sick, man. And then for me later, Chris the LL that got let's me go, man, room 515. Let's go, man. The one that got me later, a little bit later in the 90s, that's still one of the greatest songs ever. Because it's the the like the marriage of R and B and hip hop. Hey, lover, this is more like the boys and men killed that hook. They killed that shit. Mr. Smith album. I know one of the greatest because the way L was rapping over the Michael Jackson sample, just smooth, just real smooth. That album, I shot you. What the fuck? I thought a cock in the world cross mode D hammer and MC's girl. I see's girl. I fucked it up. I know with that one. Come on, man. Like the five, four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Came. Four, three, two, one. Yeah. That's from the Phenomenon album. Yeah, Phenomenon. Yeah. Album. Still on my arms. I'm living the challenges. <laughs> he he went hard. Kind of cannabis beef started on that record. He went hard. He went hard. Yeah, still attached to it. That's where the cannabis beef started. On yeah, that. cannabis really thought he was going to be LL. Really? He tried. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. I mean, you you got it. He Hall tried it. I don't, see, I don't see cannabis's name on it. I'm just saying. <laughs> he don't tried see, it. Just saying, I don't see him on there. <laughs> Smoking cannabis somewhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's legal where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> he tried it. Yeah, we have mentioned some of the other names, and then we'll go to the big one. Um, we had um, Gil Scott Heron from my OGs, and know that one. Mm-hmm. Foo Fighters going in. Oh, nice. Go goes going in. My house head, shout out my yeah, house heads appreciate my craft work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Kareem, I appreciate that one. All my '80s, <laughs> Mike Love. I saw him pull. He was excited about that one. All the '80s, 80s househeads, like, oh, craft works going in. I was like, yeah, Mike's definitely of a certain age. <laughs> you from <laughs> era in the mid '80s? <laughs> you saw? He said, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, you might be like, <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, I was a, I was a young child in the mid '80s, so. I'm um yeah. shout out MC Marcus Chapman. I'm not I'm I'm a bit I'm a little bit of a historian. Marcus Chapman is the real historian. I'm a little bit, so I know shit like that. You know some stuff, yeah. Once again, we mentioned um two-time Hall of Famers. Let's talk about Tina Turner. <laughs> Once again, people say, Oh, she ain't in. Like she she wasn't in as a solo, she was in with Ike and Tina. She Ike and Tina in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. This is getting in now. So let's give her flowers while she's here. She's 80 years old, so like put her in. It's like yeah. put her in, exactly. Yeah, like yeah, she's not she's not gonna be around forever and shit. Yeah. Cause Tina is um 82. Yeah, 82 years old. Yeah. 39, right? I believe, yeah, 39, yeah. She's 82 yeah. years old, is it basically? Yeah. yeah, she's she's of a certain age. She's getting up there. Um, but while while mm-hmm. she still while can she can still go to an us there ceremony. Like mm-hmm. now I'm alive, but like where you like you're mobile enough to get there. You get uh-huh. old certain days, you don't leave the house and shit. Like you're in your 90s. So like, yeah, like you right. like, can get her. So, yeah. so that's why I'm happy about this one. And yeah. we like what's love got to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I'm, I'm the um a private dancer album. The private dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, see, I know that era of Tina. Like our parents know, like with the Ike and Tina era. The Ike and Tina. Like, because my mom said those girls were so wild they had to yeah, yeah, they'd be yeah. shimmying and just mom, they just be the girls the yeah, ike they were wild private dancer era that's the turner i know and, and then like, we know her from mad yeah. mass beyond thunderdome oh yeah <laughs> it's my favorite part of Tina turner. <laughs> oh we don't need another hero <laughs> that's my favorite tina turner movie I like oh, the song she had with Barry White, the never in your wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the term Barry at a banger in the 90s. <laughs> that was, I'm that happy was. for her that she's getting in as a solo artist because Tina did. She like, yeah, like not- in fact, people our age know her solo career more than her Ike and Tina career. Mm-hmm. I'll say both were probably equally split. They were both as important, but like if you're if you like our age, you know the, the private dancer and mm-hmm. after the Mad Max with the spikes, with the spiked hair, hair and yeah. The short dress, like that's, that's the era, mm-hmm. yeah. And not being the uh, and like we said, like the influence Tina Turner crossed, so Beyonce could run. Mm-hmm. Beyonce was a head was heavily influenced by Tina Turner, and she even said that like that was the her other Tina, her mom Tina, and then Tina Turner. Those were the Tinas that she looked to. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so big ups for Tina. Now I'm gonna have to watch that now. Oh, we're gonna watch it's gonna air on HBO Max. I'm watching right now. So I'll definitely When's it air? It's saying Saturday, it October it? 30th. It's on the kid. Yeah. Oh, October. Nice, nice. So um and it said we'll stream on HBO Max. So I'll be watching. Yeah. I'll be watching too on HBO Max as well. Good stuff. HBO Max done came up with they uh they coming up with they uh streaming stuff. Oh, Hall of Fame. But like I said, it's um yeah, two time Hall of Fame. I said, uh, like Michael Jackson is in twice, he's in with mm-hmm. his brothers and by himself, That's of course. Right. Yeah, because like, you the gotta, put both of you can't just you can't ignore the Jackson Five. What's, right. what's the name? Got a raw deal, and like Randy got the raw deal because they inducted the Jackson Five, but not the, not the Jacksons. Randy's not in the Hall of Fame, which kind of sucks to me because. That's my favorite era of the Jacksons, the Randy version. It's no, it's no shade to Jermaine, but yeah, like I like the like like blame it on the boogie and um, let me show you. Can you feel um, it? And, um, Can, you feel, Can it? you feel it? And heartbreak. Can you feel it? And um, let's dance, let's shout, shake your body, shake your body to the ground, let's dance, that's let's shout. Era. That's the Jacksons I know. So Randy should be in. Like that's some bullshit that they should have just inducted all six when they did the brothers. I don't know why mm-hmm. they decided to like, yeah, just the um, original five, just um, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Michael, and Marlon. I wonder why they left Randy on the album. Randy, like, uh, you know, and you know, he's not <laughs> gonna get in by himself, so Randy is probably never gonna get in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Fox is like, he should be like, yeah, he, they should have put him in with his brothers, which is mm-hmm. some bullshit that they didn't do that, yeah, but it is what it is. <laughs> Can you feel it? Randy, like, he, 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 he did the first verse on that song. Yeah, yeah, he did. If you look around, 
The whole world's coming together now. now. Yeah. 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 He's the one who kicked the song off. <laughs> Now Michael just took it home. All the children oh, that he just took it. Michael just took it another level. Like not be all of them can sing. It's all the Jacksons can sing, and they all have talent. But Michael was just—he was just on another planet on his own. Like when Michael would come in and song, it's like everybody's like, oh, "Okay, okay," and then Michael come in, it's like, "Oh." Okay. A story for another day is how um, well, how I I didn't get to go to the victory tour as a kid. I don't feel like telling that story right now because. Is um my Avon PTSD over that? (laughs) 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 I found this video on YouTube. By the way, can't we talk off the air? (laughs) It was Kaminsky then, right? Yeah, yeah, it was still Kaminsky. I found a video and I got mad all over again. (laughs) There's a particular (laughs) that news clip. You was uh, the Eddie Murphy meme when he's what goes uh. Go, uh, what was his name? What was that movie? Goldfing, go, go, bow finger. There you go. Where he's mean, he's like this. Mm-hmm. That's how you were looking. <laughs> the bow finger mean, where he's like, <laughs> with that. <laughs> um, anything else you want to get in? It's some, um, it's a couple of more. Some of these stories I could leave on the shelf. Like, I'm, I'm gonna let you go in there now. Uh, well. Uh, you said that you were going to circle back about the Minnesota oh, yeah, Timberwolves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yes. yes. That's why we're a team, because I totally forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Tag team. <laughs> and I have a new owner, because uh, I'm going to tell you exactly why that's so important. Um, from A-Rod is the owner first. Yeah, A-Rod, him and his Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they bought the Timberwolves. Remember, like him and Jayla were trying to buy them, but like they're not together anymore. But like they've been trying right. to try to buy the Mets. Say like A hey, Rod just wanted to own a sports team. That's all. Yeah, that's all, yeah. Because <laughs> I saw yeah that um mm-hmm. the Wolves have been sold. Let me pull up the story real quick. So A Rod um. Mm-hmm. This would be awesome though. Like see. You know, another well, another minority owner because he is a minority. So seeing another minority in the owner, that's a good thing to see. One point five billion dollar <laughs> deal to purchase the Timberwolves. <sighs> ESPN story is taking forever. Like this, this iPad is a little bitch today. Look at this <laughs> <laughs> blank screen, like a motherfucker. Spinning. Finally, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> now it came up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Glenn Taylor is the owner. He agreed to sell the team to um A Rod and his um his team of investors, and uh yeah for one point mm-hmm. five billion expected to close around July first. So yeah, a couple of more months. That'll be. Okay. Why this is important because what people don't know that Glenn Taylor, he's um him and KG kind of got heat and shit. Well, you look like um go be I when obviously I haven't been to the Target Center in Minnesota. I haven't even been to Minnesota and shit. But yeah, you look I mean, the Rafters is no KG jersey up there, and shit. Yeah. And he's the greatest mm-hmm. Timberwolf of all time by far. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because they had heat, um, because KG, I think he was supposed to um get when he retired, he was supposed to move into like uh, management, some kind of um executive role or something with the team. Mm-hmm. But then when um his mentor Flip Saunders died, remember like his former coach yeah. died, and yeah. that kind of fucked all of that up. Because he was I guess he was supposed to work side by side with Flip or something like that. Mm-hmm. And Flip died, and the owner kind of reneged. And so KG um he and the owner they had heat all this time. When you think about all yeah every every franchise they have a greatest player in them and shit mm-hmm. like that. And most of the time that number is in the in the rafters. And you go to United City, you're gonna see that in 23. Of course, 23, duh. Yeah. 33 for that matter. And shit, yeah, you're gonna see mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And like the Lakers got so many. You're gonna go, you're gonna see they that. They got see that 24, <laughs> that eight, that 34, that 33, that 32. You're gonna uh-huh. see those numbers up there. Yeah. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. um when you go to um Boston, they got like 10 million numbers retired. <laughs> yeah, you go because now KG's is up there and um Paul Pierce, like even the the, the guys Meyer, they starting to retire there. Mm-hmm. I don't know Ray ever because of how he left, like Ray should have his retired, but I don't know if they will. If they don't, then the Celtics are on some bullshit. Ray Allen should have his number retired. Though. He should, yeah. And then Miami, you see um Wade and Bosch, their numbers are retired there. Mm-hmm. All the teams like they retired Dirk um for his 41. Yes, 41 in Dallas. Duncan, Manu, 
and um Tony Parker on uh, Robinson, all their numbers are retired hanging in that rafter. Mm-hmm. Go to Minnesota, no 21 hanging up there. It's like, yeah, hey, like where's 21 at? Where's where's the KG banner and shit? Because of that. So, like now that they're getting this owner the fuck out of there, the first thing I would do is AR say we retiring Kevin Garnett's number opening night of next season. That's the very first thing I would do. Like opening night is gonna be KG night. That's when you write your list things to do. Yeah. Retire Kevin Garnett jersey. Because it's all <laughs> open it's, at night. His number is not retired. Like Sacramento Kings, Chris Webber's number is hanging. Hey, Web, yeah. 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 It's like that's just like we somebody they give so much to your franchise, you honor him and shit. Yeah. So, you do. It's only right that you do that. Y'all like got heat and shit. Like you gotta do the right thing. It's like KG's number should have been retired. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's like when um when Steph and Clay and then Dr- Draymond, all of their numbers are gonna be retired with gold. Of course, absolutely. Like nobody's ever gonna wear number thirty with the Warriors again. Hell no, they better not. Yeah. Greatest shooter of all times, they better not. Um, you have this MVP. LeBron's twenty three in Cleveland and his six in Miami will both be retired. Like yeah, like that's mm-hmm. yeah. like the current players I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. I think um Rose's number one will be retired someday with the Bulls. Like. You see, um, I think I think the Bulls are gonna retire Derrick Rose's number. Yeah, they should at least. I think. Yeah, I think they should. I think um, I'm still kind of bullshit. They never retired Rodman. The '91 should be up there. I'm just saying. Yeah, Rodman wasn't here that long, but guess what? He was here every season. He was here. He they won a title. Yeah, he made an impact. I'm saying they won. He was here three. It years. doesn't matter like the length. titles in three years. Yeah, it doesn't Quality. matter like, the, the impact. Like I think um. The, the um, Raptors were tired Kawhi Leonard's number. He was only there one year. He brought quality him a over quantity. It's <laughs> like if you provide quality in your time there. If you played 20 years somewhere and you were mediocre, you shouldn't get your number retired. But if you were there like two or three years and you brought championships, you're yeah, right. He, he would just status quo. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting retired. You ain't getting retired there. That's the first thing I think Um, with the new ownership. I would announce that right right after the day we saw before the ink dried on the contract July first. I'll say, oh yeah, yeah. we're retiring Kevin Garnett's number opening. And name. July first is would be the time because uh, that's a new fiscal year for businesses. The fiscal year always starts July first, so and it'll be yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's so perfect on so many levels. Like Kevin Garnett <laughs> went into the um Hall of Fame. Yes, um he his number is twenty one. What year is it? Twenty twenty one. It's Ooh. perfect for the tyrant number right now. It's in Minnesota. Yeah. Just saying, man. <laughs> it's the per- it, it makes sense on so many levels to retire mm-hmm. his number. It's 21 in 21. It should be. That's just how I feel. At least. Nice. But um, want to talk about this um fake ass gas shortage before we get up out of here? Because <laughs> oh my god. What was the pipeline that got hacked and shit? Uh, I, I don't have a name of it in my iPad. So I should look it up just to see the. But um, here's the story with what happened stop with that. Stop panicking, watching Facebook or news or whatever. Stop, stop panicking. Yeah, the media people. helps with this. Stop. Like it starts the media past the feed, and the social media helps fertilize it with all that bullshit they sprinkle on it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody just starts scrambling. And then, like, you turn a fake problem into a real problem. It's just like the toilet paper. Story. Toilet paper slash like, Lysol wipes slash Lysol. You mentioned on CNN, especially the toilet paper. Like, like the, the cleaning supplies, people did kind of start buying it. But, like, nobody wasn't thinking about no fucking toilet, toilet paper. paper. <laughs> it on the news and, shit. Yeah. and now we came and wipe our ass. Get some toilet paper because you might be, you might not be able to leave the house. Yeah, you can't so. wipe your ass now. But then people started, yeah. And then you started, then, like I said, social media helped spread it with the bullshit, yeah. They and then the price gouge happened, and people on Amazon yeah. selling one roll of yeah, toilet, one big roll. Not to mention the people posting dollars. You're like, yeah, yeah, here's my local store, yeah. Nothing on the shelves and shit. It might just be your fucking store, asshole and shit. Everywhere else could be fully stocked. It's like, I was you know we always had toilet paper? Yeah. The gas station. <laughs> gas station's always had it. And like I said, your mom and pops and shit, yeah. They, they mm-hmm. never ran out. You go to the lo- your local corner store, like I said, they call them bodegas on the bodegas. east. Bodegas. Go to your local bodega, you were able to find well, uh, mini marts is what mini they're marts. typical. Mini marts, yeah. Because I found them in, my, in my neighborhood, I had two corner stores. They, they I had toilet paper the whole time, even when it was a so called shortage. Mm-hmm. So you, you could get you a four pack anytime you wanted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, the gas stations and all that. Exactly. 
But yeah, they created like now it was with this gas store. This is the first um they mentioned it, which it was it was hacked. But guess what? That was an East Coast thing. I don't got uh-huh. so with us in Chicago and shit. Yeah. Or if you're in the West, it got nothing. It's like on the East Coast. I think it might even been Southeast. I don't even know if it's the whole East Coast. It might have been like a like a regional thing that just that area has to worry about. But then motherfuckers, we know and shit posting all these videos of like people hoarding gas, people like with, <laughs> with three, four barrels in the back of their pickup truck filling them up. The and all funniest that. one, I saw people with like shit in like like jewel bags like that. <laughs> like, I didn't see that. I guess somebody with the little like looking like the little Tupperware containers like that. I saw like my guy Cash posting one of those. <laughs> The guy on the ground, like, well, like, it was a black dude, obviously, because he's like, he's only with the little Tupperware containers filling him up with gas. Yeah. And I saw, yeah, people with like four or five gas cans. Shout out Hercules. Yeah, yeah Hercules. Her- ain't no cat food that. short, it's Hercules. I'm just saying. <laughs> I saw him. Like, well, we said gas, not cat food short. Like, you just go kill a rat if we run out of cat food. <laughs> 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 But uh, and then, like, when you people start seeing these videos of like people hoarding gas and say, "Yeah, look at what they're doing," it's like so now everybody runs to the gas station. So you turn the fake problem into a real problem because even mm-hmm. though we have shortage, like I said, I've been filling up gas all this week, and um, I filled up yeah twice this week, and um, no lines like got in and out. Like yeah, people are saying people a lot of people don't claim that um is uh, gas stations are sold out. Like I haven't seen that in my area. Yeah. No, I mean I I filled up today. I, up I just filled up today. It was no lie. Now here's the, the thing that is going is um the, those aren't paid like the prices are creeping back up. I give they are over three dollars again now, mm-hmm. which is like um the, this is the highest it's been in like about five years or something like that. Mm-hmm. So the like, gas is creeping back it's up, creeping back up because of this bullshit. That's the price is going back up. I believe it'll go back down though. Mm-hmm. It all, Inflation it level out. I believe yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it. This is what stuff does. It does like that, yeah. But y'all clowns with all of this bullshit, yeah. The, the whole <laughs> you don't see me sharing none of that shit because you're only adding to the mass. Right, I'm not sharing any of that. To the mass I ain't sharing none of it. Especially when it's not even your area. It's because somebody in South Carolina filled up some barrels of gas. That yeah, because I saw people and then people up here. It's like, why are you even sharing stuff about South Carolina, Virginia? Like, like, why are you here? That's part of the country that this pipeline was affected. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, who, and it might be fixed now. It's like it's like it, it's a problem now. It's fixable. And shit. And like, I think it's fixed. Yeah. I think it is fixed. They fixed the problem. So, like, so you it, bought like if you bought you like got, a, no, yeah, but you created this. Drum. I'm sure <laughs> even with the wife, I tell the truth and the lie is more entertaining. Even though the problem is fixed, I'm pretty sure people are still gonna be hoarding gas though, because now the story is out there. So yeah, it's gonna turn into a real shortage. So you ask us who have these big drums what you, or gas is gonna be five dollars a gallon. It's gonna to get to that. Like one what are you gonna do with this gas now? You got in these big drums like that. What, what what's your pretty plan? Sure gas has an expiration date, it doesn't last forever. So exactly you gotta, you gotta use it for something and shit. Yeah. Exactly. I'm pretty sure that gas, I don't know, like I don't know what kind of shelf life gas has, but like it's gonna yeah, it's not gonna be any good after a while. Idiots. That shit is gonna go bad. So I don't know what you're gonna do with all that gas you bought. <laughs> But I'm um I'm pretty much done. That's it for me. I had to talk about that fake gas shortage. And that's a way. That's a great way to end it on gas. <laughs> I'm up out of here. Not another damn podcast. Episode two hundred seven. Hall of Hall Fame, of fame. Dance, baby. If you like what we're doing, give our <laughs> Facebook fan page a like. Also, like our YouTube videos. We trying to get the algorithm popping. So. Give this like our goddamn videos. I'm just saying, because <laughs> then when you like the videos, more people see them. And then I'm just saying, it's pretty mm-hmm. popping. Also, subscribe, share, uh-huh. rate, review on all your platforms. I'm talking about Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, SoundCloud, iHeart, TLC Talk Radio. What up, Tasha? Hey, Tasha. And get at me personally by following me at Ozman the Wizard on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Oz Radio on Snapchat and Facebook as well. I mentioned YouTube. I forgot to do the YouTube polls. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Like. Mm. There it is. And polls. And polls. We got a polls. There you go. And you can check me out, MSIMAH626 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Mm-hmm. Also, STR8GULOEY1 on Twitter, mm-hmm. STR8GULOEY7 on Instagram. Also, please like the Straight Gully Facebook fan page. 
Check out straightgully.com for your blogs and your vlogs and for your video production needs. Check out straightgullyproductions.com. I'm Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. We will talk to you later. Bye. I'm going.